Thank you very much. Um, and also thank you for the invitation. It's really nice uh, to be here. Um, what I want to do is to talk about uh, the role of uh, power uh, and the way in which uh, in progressive uh, movements and, and organizations decisions are being made and, and, and how uh, in many ways the issue of power is a contentious issue. It's always a contentious issue, but certainly within progressive organizations such as community media, my cases won't necessarily deal with community media, but what I will be talking about also applies to community, community media where you have uh, horizontal structures, where you have uh, uh, often uh, decision-making processes that are deemed to be very democratic, but there are all sorts of power processes and relationships that are often ignored or denied uh, within these initiatives. Um, and obviously uh, this goes back to uh, a popular idiom uh, that says practice uh, what you preach, which is also a song of Barry White, uh, so, I, uh, uh, so it seems. But also similarly Mahatma Gandhi's famous quote of uh, if you want to change the world, start with yourself. And so if you as a, as a progressive left-wing democratic organization, obviously you also want your decision-making processes inside your organization to be uh, as democratic and as open and as participatory as, as, as possible. Um, we see uh, already very early with uh, the study, famous study of Robert Michels that, that there is a problem there and, and that we see that uh, what he also uh, saw in uh, his uh, study around uh, um, the beginning of the, of, of, of the 1900s, uh, where he looked at uh, left-wing kind of social democratic uh, socialist parties where the expectation was, yeah, obviously they should be more democratic because they are about democracy, they are about participation, about widening participation. But obviously his study found, no, we there is what he called uh, an iron law of oligarchy. Uh, and so there's this gap between principles on the one hand and deeds on the other hand. Uh, and that socialist as well as communist parties in many uh, countries uh, around the world tend to be very centralized and top-down or, or organizations. Um, we see that in the 1960s and the 70s there's a critique that comes against that from a kind of new left perspective uh, advocating the need to democratize democracy uh, and also to expand democracy uh, to other, uh, to all aspects of, 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 of life. Uh, so we see a critique against the party systems being too rigid. Uh, we see a critique about corporate control over democracy. Uh, state security arguments are being used to wage war uh, and to repress internal protests. Uh, for example, the Vietnam War at that time uh, in, in the United States where we see the um, Students for Democratic Society uh, emerging, uh, where you see this quote uh, from 1962 uh, in their statement, uh, where in a participant democracy the political life would be based in uh, several uh, root principles uh, that decision making of basic uh, social consequences be carried out uh, on by public groupings, etc., etc. So you see uh, a kind of uh, establishment of, of, of democratic values, again, uh, and a kind of uh, hope to reach what Carol Pateman called full participation and the extension of democracy in, uh, in schools, in the workplace, uh, in the family, etc. This notion of radical democracy uh, that starts to uh, emerge. Um, Jumping to the, more, the current age, we see a whole range of organizations and movements again uh, criticizing liberal representative democracy and, and again this kind of new left critique we see re-emerging in, in the current conjuncture with, for example, uh, uh, one of the early uh, manif current manifestations was within the Pirate Party uh, movement where we see a critique again emerging of liberal democratic, uh, uh, liberal representative democracy as being too elitist, uh, not transparent enough, uh, self-serving, there's a gap between politics and, and, and the people, so to speak. Um, and here we see some interviews I did some years ago with uh, 
pirate party leaders in, in Berlin, for example, this critique of, of democracy being articulated. Uh, democratic participation is too low, she says. We see a problematic, problematic gap between the politicians on the one hand and, citizens, uh, and, and problems with uh, citizens' representation on the other. Um, so they are kind of developing new ways of, of, of uh, enabling participation and also pointing towards politicians needing to uh, um, be closer to, to, to citizens. Uh, obviously also in, in Spain and also in Greece, late, uh, the, the, what was called the Indignados movement, uh, we see the emergence of we, we, we want a real democracy, democracia real. Uh, and here in their, in their manifesto again we see uh, that uh, Politicians should be bringing our voice to the institutions, facilitating political participation of citizens through direct channels that provide the greatest benefit uh, to the wider society, not to get rich and prosper at our expense. And we see again this re-emerging uh, of a critique uh, of uh, the, the dictatorship of, of economic power uh, holding democracy at ransom. Uh, there's obviously also here a link to left-wing populism with a kind of articulation of the people versus an out-of-touch uh, elite. Um, similarly, in the Occupy movement, uh, we see uh, similar critiques again emerging, especially against this, the corporate control and, and what, what is often being called as, as uh, a post-democracy, that democracy or is, is just a shell, uh, the democracy as it's being practiced today at, 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 in our societies. Uh, this intertwining of, of corporations and, and, and governments that do not work for the people. Um, this is uh, from the corporation statement of uh, Occupy London in 2011. Obviously, these movements also, and that's where the pre prefigurative aspect comes into play, these movements also propose a set of alternatives in terms of how they themselves want to organize and, and, and decide and, and have decision-making being more open and more, more democratic. Uh, and there we see uh, two models uh, emerging. Uh, on, the one, on the one hand, the assembly model, and I'll go into both of these uh, in more detail, and on the other hand, the delegative model. And, and the assembly model has an emphasis, more an emphasis on voice and on, on inclusiveness, uh, also a focus on decision-making through consensus, and I would say that it is also more collective in nature, whereas the delegative mother, model has an emphasis more on expert, or the need or expertise and, and the, the, the possibility to delegate power to uh, representatives that, that can take decisions in our name. Uh, and it's also, again, harks back to a major, majoritarian voting model and it's more individualistic in, in, in nature. But they are both, I would say, open and participatory and they are both also forms of, let's say, direct democracy. Um, so if we look at the assembly model, we see that here there's an emphasis on, on the fact that there's, there's no leader, there's no governing body, there's no group of people that, that, that has more power than the rest, so that's this kind of open and participatory aspect of it. Uh, anybody is free to propose anything or an idea or to express an opinion uh, within, within the demos. Uh, everyone's voice is also equal, so that also in a way uh, goes back to a kind of more deliberative uh, model whereby the, 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 the strength of the argument is more important than the status of who he or she that, that voices that, that opinion. Um, and as you can also see here in this photograph on, of Occupy Wall Street, uh, hand gestures are also used a lot in, in, in this assembly model uh, to express opinions, to express consent, to express also dissent. Um, also, as I said, there's this emphasis on, on, on consensus. We need to reach a consensus. Again, I would say uh, rather Habermasian. Uh, so consensus here, uh, as, as, as defined by Occupy Wall Street, is a democratic method by which an entire group of people can come to an agreement and the input and ideas of uh, all participants are gathered and synthesized, synthesized to arrive at the final decision acceptable to uh, all. 
Now, the assembly uh, model, uh, according to, if you look in the literature, aims to create a social space, uh, also facilitating equal voice. Uh, some have also described this as the, dem the democracy of, of direct action. Uh, and uh, Fleser uh, Fominaya, from a social movement perspective, uh, says that it represents a combination of prefigurative practices of radical democracy within social movement spaces with a highly organized attack on the illegitimacy of representative democratic uh, institutions. So these are very much sound intentions and ambitions, I would say, aspirations of, of a movement in terms of prefigurative politics concerning internal decision making. However, I would also want to stress that reality is often quite messier than these good sounding intentions and ideals. And this became apparent when I started to interview uh, activists that were active within the uh, anti-austerity movement in, 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 this, in this regard. First of all, consensus building is time consuming and not, often not very uh, efficient in terms of decision making. And some have also argued that it actually weakens radicalism. Uh, so if you see in this, these quotes from, from my interviews, you can cut is a, is a uh, tax fairness uh, organization in the UK. Consensus decision making is arduous, tiring and takes hours and hours, but we make sure that everybody is heard. Uh, it's not necessarily a critique, it's just a kind of empirical uh, uh, observation that this kind of cons consensus decision-making takes time. Uh, and sometimes when you are an activist, you need to make quick decisions. Uh, and so you see that there's a distinction being made within these movements between ad, ad hoc, quick decisions that need to be make, made uh, in the moment, let's say, and the more principled decisions about identity, strategy, and tactics that are more taken through the assembly model. Um, Dave here of Occupy London uh, Stock Exchange also says that decision-making by consensus tends to lead to conservative, more conservative decisions because the message gets watered down often. Uh, and it also compromised occupies flexibility, according uh, to him. Um, also, the, this idea of a leaderless organization is also a little bit of a fallacy. Uh, and you see that also in, in some, of, some, of the, some of the discourses around, uh, for example, or academic uh, concepts such as connective action, for example, um, that this kind of notion of the leaderless horizontal organization should also be nuanced. Uh, you, Tina from UK Uncut, uh, a leaderless movement does not exist, she says. Uh, there's always people that are organizing. There's also always people that do shit, and by doing things, you inevitably also build, uh, uh, let's say, a kind of activist capital. Uh, you, 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 you build power within an organization. Uh, also in Occupy, there were tensions between those in the center doing loads of stuff and those in the periphery. Uh, similarly, another quote from, from uh, an Occupy activist, anybody that pretends that Occupy is completely leaderless movement is just denying reality. There's a core of group of people of, of about 20, 30 people that are actually running uh, the show. The delegative model. Uh, attempts to, in a way, com make a compromise or blends, blends representative democracy with more direct uh, democracy, a uh, direct democracy model. And, and it, in a way, came out of uh, an aspiration to make direct democracy work beyond small-scale groups. Uh, here again, anyone in the demos can propose an idea or express an opinion. Uh, it's often issue-focused deliberation, uh, which ensues afterwards, uh, and that can lead to a, democracy, uh, a proposal being rejected or uh, put up for vote. Uh, and here, the idea is that uh, on sort of certain issues, I, for example, have less expertise, but I trust Nico to be uh, somebody that has expertise on that particular issue, so I delegate my, vo my, my, my vote to, 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 to Nico. Uh, and, and so, uh, in, in that sense, it also becomes a majoritarian system in terms of a vote is being, is, is, that 
it, it, it is being there is voting taking place. It's not consensual, uh, and it's based on a, a choice between different alternatives uh, rather than uh, consensual. Um, A form of delegative democracy was also discussed by uh, Marx and Engels when they wrote about the Paris uh, Uprising in 1871 and the subsequent establishment of the Paris uh, Commune. Um, here's some quotes from interviews I did with... It, it's something that was really developed or kind of taken up by, by the pirate parties in, in many countries uh, and, and, and in a way renamed uh, into... Uh, liquid uh, democracy, as, as they call it. Um, and, and also within the Indignados movement or the Occupy movement, you see these discourses of liquid democracy emerging, but it's especially within the Pirate Party that this has been put forward. And I must say that it's also very technologically driven, this kind of discourse around liquid uh, democracy. Um, you get to choose which political topic you wish to actively participate in. Uh, somebody from the Pirate Party in Belgium uh, says, you may also delegate your vote to other members. Uh, people can comment and vote on things. They can vote it up, they can vote it down, and certain things will come to the top of the pile and, 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 and get, get uh, uh, acted upon. Um, and here you see that it's also very technologically driven in the sense that you have this kind of liquid uh, democracy platforms uh, or tools that, that uh, are being developed. For example, the Pirate Party in Germany developed this liquid feedback uh, as an opinion finding tool, they call it. Uh, it's liquid, they say, because maybe the idea comes from one person, other people connect with it, start thinking about the idea, create al other alternatives, and this is how politics should be developed according to uh, the par pirate uh, parties here. Um, there's obviously also a set of problems here, I would say. Um, one of the major problems, and, 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 and that's often something that... Hello? <laughs> um, that you see often in, in, in within the left or progressive movements is a denial of conflict. Uh, and, and certainly, uh, and certainly in, in, in the Pirate Party in Germany, this became very apparent. Uh, the Der Spiegel spoke of liquid democracy uh, at some point. Uh, and also, when I was interviewing the, the guy from the Pirate Party in Belgium, he, was, he acknowledged that conflicts and ideological conflicts, especially, are not being dealt with in an active way within their movement. Uh, uh, since there is at least theoretically no hierarchy, there's no formalized way to deal with conflict and with those that game the system in terms of using those technologies uh, uh, in an effective uh, manner, uh, and mostly because there are no exclusion mechanisms which tends to reward trolling behavior above uh, anything else. So liquid democracy here is often presented as something that is conflict-free. Uh, ideas are proposed, debate is had, votes are delegated, Votes are cast and the decision is made. But obviously we know that politics is, all of, is, is, is often conflictual and you cannot just eliminate, eliminate these things. Uh, similarly, there's often a low uptake and enthusiasm in terms of these, these decision uh, tools. Some of these, if you look at these platforms, there's often very few people that actually engage uh, meaningfully. Uh, and, and this is also acknowledged by a pirate party in, in, in Belgium. Uh, the most problematic thing, however, I think, is also that politics gets reduced to issues that are disconnected from broader structural uh, 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 discussions and, and, and ideologies. Uh, so there's, there's a disconnection between all these different issues because everything is, is dealt with at a kind of issue base. And, and that also opens up to, to my conclusion where one of, one of the issue the issues I have with uh, um, the uh, um, both, I, I would say, the pirate, both the delegative model and, and the assembly model, is that uh, ideology increasingly gets bracketed uh, across all these cases. We can observe an abject rejection of, for example, the left-right ideological cleavage. Uh, 
For example, in the Ignatius movement in Spain, some of us consider ourselves progressive, others conservative, some are believers, some not. Some of us have clear defined ideologies, others are apolitical. So you get this kind of tendency of we want to enlarge the number of people we speak with, so we, we need to move away from uh, left, right. In my interviews with the Occupy movement, uh, this left, the left was a diversionary label, they called it. Uh, and our solutions are presented as humane, uh, commonsensical, etc. Also, the Pirate Party, we, we reject this. This is an old style uh, terminology. Um, so, while well, in some cases this is strategic, so the but like Occupy, uh, this rejection of ideology, and as such, also, I would say, as an, a narrative which binds together different critiques and solutions is potentially problematic and dangerous, for example, in terms of co-optation. Co so if we see how uh, in the UK Brexit or how Trump kind of co-opts co -opted a few of these kind of uh, uh, tropes of, of the Occupy movement, uh, uh, we, see, we see the danger in, in, in that. And finally, I, I end with, with, with power and, and, and how uh, this denial of power and conflict in, in the context of progressive politics is, is also quite prevalent. Uh, whereas, on the other hand, we need to acknowledge that power is always present uh, in, 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 in politics, but also in, in relations between people. Uh, power is present in discourse in terms of expertise or knowledge. It's uh, present in subject positions, uh, in terms of activist status or capital, as I said earlier. It's uh, also there through inclusion and exclusion. Uh, we, we, we can uh, relate this to the, the Derrida's constitutive outside or uh, Stephen Luke's third dimension of power. Uh, and power also inevitably invokes resistance against the exercise of power, uh, against exclusion, and, 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 and that deals with, with conflict. So, so there's, there's uh, a need to kind of uh, acknowledge this w w within the left and not necessarily in terms of power as domination or, or as repression, but also a post-structuralist, I mean, through, between the lines you can read here, here also, that it also refers to a post-structuralist perspective on power, which is needed to understand the, dynam the, the power dynamics at play in both the assembly and the delegative decision-making processes within a progressive politics, and which also relates to, uh, also in my experience, uh, community media initiatives. Thanks very much.